What's up everybody? So yesterday I was here on this case and it was running in the 40s, you know, low 40s, um, upper 30s as best as possible. Here's the graph that shows right when I made the change to it, which I'm going to get to in just a second. You can see it was running very badly. They couldn't keep any of the, of the probiotic stuff in there, any of the dairy food. Um, and then after I worked on it, we have a, a good significant drop and it remained uh, dropped you know, overnight in comparison to the days before. Got two cases here. Yesterday I had this shelf off, but you can see back there we've got another removable panel and another TXV back behind there. So yesterday I pulled those panels off and measured my superheat and I was reading about zero to two degrees of superheat on both of them. So I adjusted the adjustment screw down probably two turns on this one. And then this one over here was, for some reason, seemed to be a lot more sensitive. But I adjusted it down um, probably three quarters of a turn. And I got my superheat up to about eight to 10 degrees on both of them. And then I immediately noticed that difference. So. It's, uh, it's pretty strange, you know, you would think that by, sh by cutting off refrigerant and reducing flow that it would work less efficiently, but that's actually not the case. By seeing the superheat rise, we're also, that's the amount of heat that we're removing from the case. So we don't want to see such a flooded coil, such a low superheat. We want to see it, you know, around 8, 10 degrees, maybe even 12. I'm not sure. Correct me if you want. Um, but you know, if we have a zero superheat, that's going to be bad. Even a two degree superheat is going to be bad. And that's why it was performing bad. So, uh, see if I can get you guys some more videos today. Um, back at the same place that I was where I made five videos in one day the other day. So I've got two calls here. We'll see if I can make something on that. Thanks for watching.